Hey, what's up, boys? Damn, boy. Damn, boy, he's thick, boy. That's a thick-ass boy. Here to you today to talk about a little thick boy craft that we got done. Uh, really, really uh, cool craft, putting a lot of effort on it. We have made the number one elemental mirror bow um, for Necropolis League. This took a significant amount of currency, as the title indicates, as well as a significant amount of time. But it is actually, um, now League specific, the best uh, elemental bow I've personally ever made. Um, I have done uh, actually the best elemental bow to ever exist as of Sanctum League. Um, pre previously it was uh, Path of Maths so for a short time I had the best elemental bow in the game uh, and the Crucible League came around so obviously that was dethroned however during Crucible League obviously made the best physical bow ever and last league made the best mirror bow uh, for elemental again and then this league uh, again the best elemental mirror bow so of those elemental mirror bows I've made this is the best one every mod on here is tier 1 natural and every mod on here is best in slot so we are going to go through the craft today uh, and I'm going to discuss kind of the key moments. I've got this all lined up. And for those of you who get pissed off every time I kind of go on tangents, I wrote myself a, a speech or a script to follow. So have no fear. Uh, so again, to hover over that, you can see we've got 30 crit multi plus one frenzy, 8% attack speed, tier one fire, tier one cold, tier one lightning, plus two arrow, tier one attack speed, and then the tier one perfectly rolled natural Ashling crit. And the uh, total elemental DPS on that is 1,637. So... Uh, talking about the bow cost, um, what did it, you know, what it cost to make, what was the decision making process? So we're going to get into that. Uh, we're going to get into that side of things um, here now. Do, do, do. I'll keep that hovered over that. So um, the bow bases to get the um, synthesis base originally, uh, since Cortex no longer drops uh, three uh, implicit synthesis mobs, mobs mods. Um, we have to buy a bunch of uh, I eighty six plus spine bows, just white off of the trade site. And then manually synthesize them using harvest if you come over to the harvest bench and then you just go synth you can see here it is 5000 vivid life force and one sacred life force per craft um you can see here i got a bunch of other ones i i did 20 synthesis uh, harvest synthesis and we actually hit it three times um historically speaking i've got pretty decent data on it it's usually about one in every 15 to one in every 20 we'll hit three implicits um, so that's how we started off. Uh, I actually got incredibly lucky and we had a 9 to 13 fizz damage um, to attacks on the original uh, Harvest Synth, which is actually the um, the best in slot mod for a fizz bow. So the original idea, given the fact that we had that, was to craft a fizz bow. Um, however, um, since, uh, you know, things can change, um, we decided, you know, at that onset, of course, we're just going to roll the vultures and then, you know, we'll see what comes up. There are basically four... Uh, types of archetypes that bows can be in terms of mirror crafts, which are a physical bow, a tri-elemental bow, uh, a spell bow, or a deck stacking bow. So you do have some options there. And uh, of course, I'll go through what we went through. Um, so uh, we started off with the 9 to 13 flat fizz. Uh, and soon thereafter, I quickly hit tier 1 attack speed, 8% uh, attack speed, 7 to 8%. And shortly after that, I hit tier 2 flat lightning damage. So it was tier 2 flat lightning, tier 1 attack speed, tier 1 flat damage with fizz. So at that point, it was one mod away. Well, I'd have to upgrade the lightning damage to tier one, but one mod away theoretically from uh, a perfect fizz bow or a perfect elemental bow. So that was what the plan was. Um, and then, of course, you know, every time you say you have a plan, God laughs, as they say. Um, but uh, I assume then thereafter hit explode, which is actually one of four tier zero. So when I say tier zero, I'm talking about terms of rarity, right? So if you talk about like a tier five unique, tier four unique, and then the ascending tier means it's rarer. Uh, similarly with synth mods, the competitive advantage that I have um, as a crafter um, is, you know, I, I've been meticulously uh, keeping data on synthesis rolls um, for since they came out. Uh, Vivid Vultures, I believe it was Sanctum League that came out. So that's like, what, like four or five leagues now. Um, and I've got well over like 250,000 uh, data points on it. In fact, I can show you here. Uh, we continued that throughout the craft. Um, if you take a look here, this is uh, what we spent. But if you look down here, I know this is not zoomed in very much. But uh, you can see um, relevant Sith rolls and throughout the process, I was marking down them as they come. So that is something that I have been doing for quite some time. Um, and it's one of the advantages that I have that other people don't that allows me to uh, craft these items with more uh, precision than others, um, as well as, you know, not to discount the amount of time and effort and uh, whether or not you want to call it expertise, I suppose, expertise that I have in, in uh, the field uh, of doing that. Um, but anyways, yeah, so we hit tier one, or sorry, we hit explode, which, as I mentioned, is one of four tier zero rarity modifiers. 
those four, those four T zeros are explode, uh, tier one global crit multi, plus one frenzy charge, and plus one support charge. Um, and so after hitting the T one explode, um, after hitting the uh, T one explode, I. Um, you know, kept rolling, and it, you know, obviously from there, there's a few different options you can have. Sorry, this guy's messaging me for. Oh, perfect! There, there goes a mirror service on the bow. There we go, baby. Um, we also shortly thereafter then hit global crit multi tier one. As I mentioned, those are both tier zero rarities. Um, I, I'm not going to give you guys the exact numbers of what everything takes because, as I mentioned, it is one of the competitive advantages that I have. Um, and if I, I were to disclose that fully, it would. Uh, it would shift the balance of power too much for the natural ecosystem. But um, uh, roughly a one in 2,000, it takes roughly 2,000 vultures uh, to hit a uh, T0 rarity modifier. Uh, and so um, to have the explode and then the tier one crit multi, incredibly rare. In fact, uh, that at that stage, because both of those were on the same bow, uh, explode is not good on attack mods, um, but explode is incredibly good for like a blade vortex spell bow. Um, and best in slot for that, you can make the argument of either plus one support gems, explode, or spell double damage, or for, you could also do uh, T1 crit multi, spell double damage, and explode. Uh, tier one uh, double damage, well, spell double damage, sorry, there's only one tier of it, so spell double damage, uh, which is 16 to 18%, is um, about a one in 350 to a one in uh, 400 to hit. Um, so having that as the third synthesis mod to roll is actually uh, the, the ideal scenario. So at that point, even though we wanted to start as a Fizz bow and then go to an Ellie bow, it was like, holy shit, we have this incredibly rare opportunity. Why don't we go for a uh, spell bow? And so that was the plan. And then, of course, uh, you know, again, to have a plan, God laughs. We end up rolling plus one frenzy charge and it replaces the third mod. At this point, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit mind blown, right? And I'll show you that here. Uh, if you see, uh, we've got the uh, the 30 crit multi, the uh, plus one to frenzy charge, and the uh, chance for enemies you kill to explode, uh, which is, as I mentioned, the, all three of those are T0 rarities. Um, I cannot stress to you how rare that is. That base does not exist in any league. <laughs> um, and like a one in 2,000, a one in 2,000, a one in 2,000, right? And then when you roll the second one, it's got a 33% chance of replacing the first mod. When you roll a second, a third one, it's got a 66% chance of replacing either the first or the second. Not to mention the first one, you have to use just vultures. The second one, you use three vultures for one Kratrick. The third one, you use uh, three vultures and two Kratricks. Uh, the, the sheer amount of mirrors it would take to roll that is just absolutely insane. Um, however, uh, with a spell build, you basically are required to have spell double damage on there just because it is so strong, despite the fact it is of a lower rarity. Um, however, because we now had three T0 rarity mobs, mods, as long as it kept explode, because that's pretty central to uh, Blade Vortex is primarily the one that would use a spell bow, um, you know, chaining together explosions with Occultist and with uh, Herald Device, and uh, you can also get it from, you know, the jewels and a couple other sources, the flask if you want to, the chest explode with Crusader mod, um, and as well as from the, uh, uh, what are those clubs called? Asnats. Um, but that's pretty central to it. So at that point, it would, the plan was to go for a spell bow. We ended up hitting spell double damage and it replaced explode. Shit. So keep rolling. Um, and keep rolling and keep rolling. And what ha ends up happening? I roll tier one attack speed. Tier one attack speed again replaces explode. But I realized as soon as that happens, we now have the absolute best in slot possible thing that you can get for an elemental bow, which is tier one uh, attack speed. Uh, since uh, elemental bows, unlike fizz bows, the only thing that they scale off of, right? A fizz bow, you've got the flat fizz damage, which then gets multiplied by the fizz percentage, right? And then the hybrid fizz also multiplies the flat damage, and then that gets scaled by the attack speed, and then, right? But on an elemental bow, you just have the flat lightning sources, and then it's scaled by the attack speed. So local attack speed is incredibly important on an elemental bow, both functionally and for um, its LEDPS. Sorry, I'm, I'm seeing here now because I'm also recording this live. Um, on Twitch uh, for the YouTube folks, I can see that the, uh, I'll turn off those alerts there so they're not blocking the center of the screen. Sorry about that. Um, so anyways, yeah, we had that, those three cents. And so at this point I did some market research, right? Um, because they had discussed the fact that uh, Tornado Shot obviously was nerfed. And so I wanted to see, all right, well, what's the market cap potential here, right? So, um, and so I went in and looked out at it. And um, at the time of crafting, 21% of all players, main weapon was a bow. Um, I don't care, guys. Um, was a bow. 
Boys, please do not message me, especially to look at something like a high resire while I'm recording a video. Uh, I should have to go without saying, <laughs> come on, some, some situational awareness. At the time of crafting, yeah, 21% of all players' main weapon uh, was a bow. Um, and of that 21%, 46% of bow users were using a tri-elemental bow. Um, conversely, only 450 out of the 14,000 registered accounts at the time were using a physical bow. Um, this meant that there was a potential market for mirror, a mirror elemental bow of 9.6% of the entire player base. Um, now, as I mentioned at the start of the video, I have crafted the best mirror elemental bow um, in several leagues. And so I have very good data on how many times they actually get mirrored. So last league, I had the best mirror Ellie bow. Um, and it was mirrored close to 500 times, right? And at that time, uh, the mirror elemental, sorry, elemental bow builds only reflected 1.6%, right? Now, as I just mentioned, it's actually 9.66 was the percentage of, of current players uh, that are using a tri bow. And so if you're just doing some basic math, okay, well, at this point, there isn't a competitive, uh, and sorry, I should mention to last league, TFT had a bow that got serviced a few hundred times as well, even though mine was for sure, it was like, you know, standalone in terms of the best. TFT had one that was, you know, somewhat comparable to begin with. Um, uh, and they put it out a few days before I finished mine, plus TFT's online 24 seven. And obviously they have a much greater marketability and reach given the, you know, their website and the amount of people in their discord and whatnot. So there's those limitations there that exist, but it would be foolish to think that I was capturing, you know, hundred percent of the market last league. Um, but it just in terms of the amount of players that were using a tri elemental bow build. Um, and of course, not every player is going to be using a mirror item. Um, however, you can consider what your overall market cap potential might be. Right. And so we had, I observed that 9.6% of all of the entire player base would be using a best in slot uh, such as this. Now, it, even though the spell bow was probably like in my mind, it's kind of like a cooler craft, right? Like a, a tri triple elemental bow, not that cool. You know, I mean, it is very cool, but it, you know, I don't, maybe I'm just jaded, but people have seen it before, right? Whereas the roles that I had on the spell bow were, you know, completely novel and it would be super cool. Um, and there's also the consideration that, you know, with the new Necropolis crafting, people can basically just print the triple tier one prefix elemental bows, right? However, on closer looking into it, um, they don't roll plus two arrow, which is just a massive uh, loss to begin with. But on top of that, um, you know, given the fact that we had the T1 crit multi, right? The uh, the ones that roll with Necropolis have uh, attack speed, crit chance, and crit multi. But the, the crit multi we have on our prefix, or our implicit rather, is basically the exact same amount, 30 versus 38, which means that we get plus two arrow as a benefit. Also, we get 8% base attack speed, and I've already mentioned that's super, super important, and a frenzy charge on top of that. And also, the divine is going to be much better. And on top of that, we've got the strength and int. So it really does separate itself by by a very substantial margin, especially if you're playing a bow skill that scales very well off of uh, additional arrows. Um and so that includes, uh, when you're looking at the best in slot, that includes for uh, Elemental Hit, Lightning Arrow, Bama, and Elemental Tornado Shot, right? Um, furthermore, I was also confident that there was probably going to be a free physical bow, since that's been something that's been happening the past couple of leagues. And TFT had already actually crafted a Mirror Fizbo. And so uh, to make a Fizbo was just kind of uh, silly. Uh, as a side note, I'm actually going to make a video, separate video on this um, in, in the future, uh, hopefully pretty soon. Uh, but as a fun fact, and this is not a matter of opinion, um, this is a mathematical uh, assurance, and it kind of is a big paradigm shift um, in terms of public consciousness about uh, mirror bows. Uh, elemental bows are actually more expensive than fizz bows to craft now. Um, and I can prove that mathematically without a shadow of a doubt. They are 100% more expensive and more difficult to craft a perfect elemental bow now than it is a perfect fizz bow. Um, the reason for that as a TLDR um, is twofold. Number one, Hinakora's locks, uh, and number two, the change to Krejcik Chimeras. Um, because augmenting for the third prefix on an Ellie bow is a one in 93, or one in 94, I apologize, whereas augmenting for the third prefix on a fizz bow is a one in 40. Um, now, it takes a lot more Krejcik Chimeras to get the, uh, the double tier one, but because Krejci Chimeras additionally also now have the, you know, 20%, 30%, 40% chance to not consume, um, and because Hinakora's locks have to be used every time you miss an augment, right? A 1 in 40 times 3 means it takes like 120 uh, Hinakora's locks on average to be able to hit flaring on a fizz bow, whereas on a uh, elemental bow, it takes um, 94 times 3, so uh, 282 Hinakora's locks, the difference of which is about 16 mirrors. On top of that... Um, as I mentioned, Frenzy Charge and Crit Multi are both T0 rarity. 
whereas uh, Flat Fizz uh, is about a tier uh, one or tier 1.5. Um, and uh, tier one uh, Fizz percentage is also a tier two. Uh, so the synthesis mods are easier to hit in the Fizzbo and the augment is uh, much, much easier and much cheaper to hit. Uh, on top of that, the suffixes are of course the same. So that's something that maybe people haven't considered, but it kind of blew my mind because obviously it's pretty deeply seated in there that Fizzbos are harder. And I'd like to remind you, you know, despite the fact that it might seem like I'm being biased here, I also have the, the best Fizzbo to ever exist on standard, which has made me literally thousands of mirrors. <laughs> um, but just as a matter of objectivity, Elemental bows are harder to craft. Now, in terms of use case, um, you know, a lot of people uh, equivocate fizz bows as being better because of the scaling that happens off of them. There are the tornado shot nerfs. Um, the thing that it's primarily best for is magic fine builds. Magic fine builds are not min maxed, right? It's, it's a utility build. Again, not a matter of opinion, just a statement of fact. A magic finding build has to use headhunter, not because the builds are so good, but because they are so bad. Uh, and I mean bad performance wise, because if you have rarity or quantity on a piece of rare gear, obviously that means you are not getting a regular stat and magic finding uniques are obviously uh, pretty like they're bad performance wise, right? Like gold, gold worm only has fire res and 10 move speed. Um, the chest has the negative res and the negative movement speed, uh, etc. Right. And so headhunter is used as a way to, um, to, to make up for that. Uh, and so if you like playing that way, completely fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But again, it's not a performance-based build. Um, and then Tornado Shot, of course, um, had the recent nerf, um, which was the primary factor for using it. And then Lightning Arrow and Elemental uh, Hit, um, both can be used with a Fizzbo. Uh, however, Lightning Arrow uh, kind of screws it up a little bit because you can't have 100% Fizz to Cold conversion, since Lightning Arrow inherently gives 50% uh, Fizz as uh, Lightning. Right, and so it'll prorate it. So if you have 100% fizz converted to cold and still have the 50% fizz as that, it'll make it 33% lightning, and it'll make it 66% cold, um, which you can still obviously make it pure elemental, but you don't get that same stacking benefit from hatred since hatred gives more cold damage. So, and not to mention they also nerfed um, the uh, the helmet, I'm blanking on the name of it, but the one that gives cold as extra fire. Um, and it was, well, they obviously got rid of the additional arrow. That wouldn't apply on standard, which is convenient for me since I have best Fizzbo on standard because the helmet enchant still exists. So you can still get the secondary projectiles. Um, and then elemental, elemental hit, which is what I'm using right here. Uh, you can see it just adds flat lightning damage, flat cold and flat fire. Um, and you deal no non-elemental damage. So it doesn't scale really at all with, with Fizzbo's. Um, in fact, it's kind of counter uh, intuitive to use those. And so they're, they're you know, Preference wise, again, I'll break this down in a future video doing a meta analysis of different bows. Um, but the the widely adopted or widely um, accepted view that fizz bows are 100% better always um, is certainly not the case anymore. Um, you can definitely make a much stronger argument for um, them being either on parity or in many ways, uh, like definitively. Again, with builds, it's going to depend how you build it. Um, because fizz to cold still the scaling of fizz to cold um as well as being able to get cold fizz as extra blah 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 that is still very very strong even if you're not going pure cold um however on the crafting side of things irrefutably it is a hundred percent more difficult and more expensive to craft an elemental bow now um but uh anyways i digress um Let's see. So yeah, the rebalancing uh, and then tornado shot, of course, yeah, I had the secondary projectile removed, the slower attack speed and the animation change. Um, but uh, yeah, now that we've covered that, um, in order to finish the implicits, by the way, the total cost was 1,706 vultures, 967 Krejcik Chimeros, 8,019 rare beasts. Um, and then also I made note, uh, as I showed you guys, I had that big list of all the mods I rolled, just in case anyone is curious, as a little fun fact. Uh, I hit tier one flat fizz damage seven times, tier one fizz percentage three times, tier one attack speed three times, which funnily enough meant that I could have made at least three perfect fizz bows. Uh, we also hit the deck stacking mod twice, the strength stacking mod twice, the int stacking uh, mod once, spell double damage three times, tier one crit multi one time, tier one, or sorry, plus one frenzy one time, explode one time, tier two crit multi four times, plus one support zero times, um, 45 to 50 life gain on hit three times, uh, tier one spell damage eight times, and then tier one flat, cold, and lightning, or sorry, flat, flat, cold, fire, and lightning. So the flat damage ones combined, we hit them six times total. Um, <clears throat> now, so moving on to prefixes. Uh, the first step is obviously just to alteration, um, get a T1 flat. So it took one divine of alterations to hit tier one flat fire. 
Uh, after that, you do prefixes cannot be changed, and then you imprint it, come up to the harvest bench and do reforge. Um, you, you want to be augmenting, not for, you don't want to augment typically for uh, um, cold damage because cold damage augment requires vivid life force and vivid life force is usually more expensive than either wild or primal. And so in that case, I was reforging for uh, T1 cold damage because I didn't want to have to augment it. Um, and we ended up hitting that on uh, 38 imprints. So it took 38 imprint uh, reforges. On average, I think it takes about 84 of them. And then um, the third prefix, of course, after hitting the double tier one, the third prefix did roll um, a, a, you know, a throwaway mod and it took four Hinochorus locks to remove that uh, to get it into the state that it was tier one fire, tier one cold, um, and then the you know, you can do any suffix, multi-mod and prefixes cannot be changed. And then you want to augment. Now, so that was prefix number two. For prefix number three, and this is the part where I was mentioning earlier, actually makes elemental bows more expensive to craft than fizz bows now. Um, it's, uh, I actually had a very, very complex breakdown of it here, which I can show you guys. Uh, da -da -da. Not the window capture. Oop, what did I just do here? Um... Uh oh yeah here i'll just copy paste it sorry guys still crap with computers even despite my best efforts um <laughs> all right we'll put that there and then we'll put the window capture here all right so you're, you can see here, this is how I would do this, uh, like especially if I've got other people on my crafting team, um, I would make a full assessment like this. So it takes 92 augments on average, blah, 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 hover, etc. So you can break down what the average is to make it, the step by step, what is the price of the certain material cost, um, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and the average cost was 4,100 divines on average at that point to do the 92 augments to hit the third tier one. Um, at, that, at that point, that's a 12 mirror takes 12 mirrors on average to get 3T1. Um, and so obviously that's a pretty big moment. Now, crafting mirror bows in the past, um, I've actually never got like RNG lucky. I, I know I grind it out. And I know when you just watch highlights of me crafting, it probably seems like I've got the best luck in the world. But um, just as a statement of fact, I've actually never got lucky. I've always had the above average crafting cost to finish things. Um, but uh, going for the third tier one on the lightning bow or on the Ellie bow this league, all of a sudden, the luck changed. So, right above me here, let's watch. So, this is, I just hit, the, we just finished it, right? So, we're going for our first augment. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. I just hit it on the first try. Yeah. Just like when I talk to the ladies. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, yeah, you can tell I'm a little bit in shock. Of course, I link it in global chat because, you know, obviously got to flex once in a while on them. Um, what do you know? We ended up hitting it on the first augment. Uh, cue spicy sushi moment from a couple leagues ago. Um, and that is actually, as I mentioned previously, that is um, two and a half times rarer than hitting the flaring. Um, and so that's a huge, huge moment. So that just knocked uh, 12 mirrors off of the expected cost, right? So obviously I'm pretty jacked up. Um, this was on Friday of last, le uh, last league. At this moment, I was, again, because I was expecting to have to do this all day and, and the, the physical time that it takes to, you know, have to remove things with locks and blah, 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 and get all the materials can be quite, quite strenuous, but we just knocked that out of the park. And so I told myself, I'm like, you know what? Let's finish this sucker today. Let's make a full mirror bow one day, start to finish, excluding the implicits, which took me a week, over a week to roll. Um, and so we start moving on to the next step, which is plus two arrow. And plus two arrow, um, oops, sorry. Well, of course you have to wipe your, um, you have to wipe your, uh, oops, sorry. It's the wrong one again. Actually, you guys can't see this. So when I say sorry, it doesn't make any sense to you. Uh, <laughs> um, for the second, uh, sorry. So we you wipe the suffixes. So the three prefixes are done. And the first thing to do is I uh, get the plus two arrow on there. To get plus two arrow, you do... Um, uh, you craft, use the bench mod, uh, hybrid uh, accuracy and dexterity. So this guy, this guy right here, 161. So that blocks both dexterity and accuracy rating, which have a combined weighting of 15,000, 9,000 for uh, dex, 
and 6,000 weighting for accuracy. So that makes it significantly a uh, higher chance to, to get whatever you're going for. Uh, however, it still does take, I think, 650-ish exalts and 650 divines uh, to get the um, plus two arrow on there. So what you do is you block that, then you do uh, exalt, exalt. And if you don't hit it, then you go prefixes can't be changed, scour, and just rinse and repeat. Uh, and so every two exalts require two divines which means on average it's an equal amount of both. And lo and behold, holy shit, boys, are we getting lucky again or what? I end up hitting it after, where is it, sorry. Uh, I ended up hitting it on 64 exalts and 64 divines, 32 scours and 32 bench crafts. So we saved ourselves, what's that, uh, oh, almost 600. So at that point, almost two mirrors, right? It's about two mirrors on average to get plus two around there. Boom, so I'm looking at the craft average right now and I'm like, holy cow. We got two double zero implicits, uh, even though that did cost, like, took me, like, literally almost 80 or eighty or 100 hours to roll that over an entire week. Um, so that's not like that part was easy. Uh, but, again, it is incredibly rare to get those two together. Um, we hit it on the first try on the augment, and we go ahead and we hit it after 36 exalt divines. I was like, is this going to be the fuck? Is this going to be the bow? Is this going to be the one where I finally get lucky? All right, the last step we have to do now is get tier one attack speed. Right. And then, um, you know, in some cases, people just bench the final mod. But, you know, uh, there's uh, there's this group. I can't remember what they're called, but um, tier fucking two or whatever. And, you know, we ain't tier fucking two. So we're going to go for the natural tier ones. But regardless, the last big thing that you need to do is get that tier one attack speed. As I mentioned a few times already, uh, the natural attack speed of an elemental bow is super important. So um, so for suffix number two, what we do and the same thing again, we just go block accuracy and dex. Right. Uh, with the bench craft, and then you put a Kinokora's lock, and you hover that bad boy over with an exalt. Uh, it takes 122 Hinokora's lots, locks and exalts on average to get tier one attack speed doing that. Um, at the time, uh, Hinokora's locks, when I started doing this, there are 32 divines each, mirrors are 350 divines each. Um, and so it's about 11 mirror, sorry, one, 11 locks on average to one mirror. All right, uh, so that meant 122 was going to take um, a, approximately 11 mirrors, right? Uh, and but however, since I had got so lucky on the prefixes, I still had 84 Hinakora's locks left, and so I was like, "Oh damn, we're only 40 locks shy." I'm like getting all jacked up. I'm like, "Oh baby, we're gonna have a you know 61 mirror bow done in like two hours." I, you know, I'm getting I'm getting a little hype on myself as I, as I tend to do, and so I'm uh, very close, right? And uh, so, you know, I, I don't even start buying locks, right? And people in chat are like, because the guys in my guild weren't able to really uh, uh, to, to help out too much at this stage. So um, we, uh, uh, people in chat are like, yo, don't worry, you know, go for it, go for it now, get the tier one attack speed. If, if it doesn't happen, we can just loan you it because, you know, you get us back on the mirror fees. And so I was like, all right, sick. So I approach this with a ton of confidence. And again, it takes 122 on average. Now, I hit, I, so I start, I start locking, I start locking, we keep going, 122 locks, haven't hit it, on the very last lock, I hit tier 2 attack speed, so 16%, which is also better than Ashley. Super tempting to stop there, because again, I have zero locks left, but chat says to me, okay, you know, we can let them chew, I go, alright, well, you know, it's so close, mirror fees are going to come in, and as I mentioned last league, you know, 500 mirror services, we've got six times the market, that means, you know, theoretically, 3,000 potential mirror services, you know, TFT had put out um, a, a really bad mirror bow that they've got, you know, 120 divine fee or 150 divine fee on something like that. It's like, so, you know, if I last league, I, I charged 150 dibs. So I was like, okay, even though it was a worse bow, I was like, well, if we assume the same, then, um, you know, the, the potential there would be 450,000 divine. So it's something I'll be able to pay back, right, eventually. And of course, you know, 122, it's not like pulling a deck of cards where you're like, you know, every time you remove one, it becomes more likely to get another. RNG is just RNG. Right. Um, but at the same time, I still felt pretty confident. So um, I, I, I actually sold all of my own gear. Uh, I was playing a, a assassin previously. Uh, I sold every piece of gear I had in the league off of my character, my, all my jewels, all that stuff. Was able to buy some more locks. And then again, the guys in chat start helping me out. Um, and what, what, lo and behold, what happens? 328 Hinakora's locks. 328. Hinokoro's locks. And uh, as I mentioned, they started off at 32 divines, but because I had to buy so many of them, by the end of it, they were 47 divs each. So I had to spend 35 mirrors. 
35 mirrors to get tier one attack speed. And so even though I'd like to say I was super jazzed when this moment uh, eventually happened, um, you know, you could probably see it in my face. Here, we'll watch. Look at that. I've only got eight locks left right now. Seven locks left. Oh my god. Yes. Oh. <laughs> you can tell that you remember that you juxtapose that next to the first one where I'm yes, oh my god. And that time it's just oh my god, yes. <laughs> So yeah, 35 mirrors later, 320 Hinakora's locks, almost triple the average amount it would take. We got the tier one attack speed. Now, um, in the process of doing that, I hit tier one crit chance multiple times. The reason why, uh, even though it can be kind of uh, debating to take that, the reason why you want to have the attack speed first is because then you can do prefixes can't be changed and you can divine the attack speed to 19% in case uh, the exult, right? In case you exult, like if you were to make attack speed your last mod and you ended up hitting... Uh, like 17%, you're stuck with that basically, right? And one of the cool things too about divining it um, is because it takes so many Hinakora's locks, right? Um, when you are trying to get the tier one attack speed on there, in our case, it was 328 of them, right? When the when you when you hover with an exalt, instead of um, instead of just, uh, you know, blessed orbing it and replacing the lock, you can also hover with a divine orb. Um, and you so you can actually divine it very, very well. Um, and so I, I, we got ours incredibly high divine, as you can see here, 222 out of 225, 384 out of 390, 348 out of 348, 627 out of 638, 28 out of 28, and 189 out of 204. And before, before you ask me, Belton, why didn't you divine it a hundred percent? You said this is all best in slot. Uh, it's literally impossible. Um, uh, like as close to impossible as you can imagine, um, on Fizbo's, it's a, like it's not really practical in a temp league. I've actually done it before with Load Thunder in Crucible League. Uh, that takes 9,000 divines. Um, and until I did it with Load Thunder, which was the first time a perfect item had ever been done, um, it was just considered out of the question to do that for his Fizbo. Um, now, again, that's with 9,000 divines. Um, think in your head mentally right now. How many divines do you think it would take to, to, uh, to hit a perfect Elibo? Okay. All right. Lock that number in. And here's what it actually is. 61 times 56 times 56 times 11 times 49 times 90 for a total of 9 billion 279 million 768 thousand 960 divines on average uh with the current the, the mirror rate at the time that would translate to 25,714 mirrors uh to get a 100 percent perfect divine on your prefixes so this is literally about just about as close as you can get a very 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 high roll i was actually super stoked about it and we were able to do that in the process of going for the tier one attack speed so in the video just showed you we hit that tier one attack speed uh even though i was relieved to get it done um you know it, it was oof, that was that was taxing now the final stage that you could do you could just bench crit on there right that's that's you know what uh those that organization I mentioned pre mentioned previously likes to do, but of course we weren't going to do that. So the final step is to get the Ashling crit on there. At that stage, you are pretty much locked into because you're not going to divine it again uh, for the reasons I mentioned with the uh, the flat Ellie and the attack speed. So whatever you unveil, you want to keep. Um, it takes it's it takes it's a 23% chance to unveil crit chance, right? Um, and then in order to do so, because at this point you'd have plus two arrow, 19% attack speed. You then craft prefixes cannot be changed and you do a Veiled Orb. The Veiled Orb has a 1 in 3 chance to replace uh, the prefixes cannot be changed, so it takes 3 Hanacora's locks on average, right? And then you have to, uh, the Unveil itself um, is 1 in every 4.5, right? So you then Unveil it, and if that Unveil fails, then you have to use a Hanacora's lock, and since you have to pick a mod, and you can't use a meta mod, you have to use 6 Hanacora's locks on average, and you just have to annul um, you just have to annul off whatever the uh, Veiled mod is. Unfortunately, a Veiled Orb cannot replace, so you can't use a Veiled Orb to try and replace the, the Veiled mod, uh, so it has to be an annul. Um, the first time I did that, it took me uh, 13 Hinokora's locks just to replace the first uh, attempt, um, and we didn't get lucky here either. Um, we, we actually just hit it on average. I unveiled it on the fourth try, 
um, and it took 36 Hinakoras Lux, so another 4.5 to 5 mirrors uh, just to get that final mod on there. Um, in total, the bow uh, cost 67 mirrors. It took me over 125 hours myself to craft it. Um, and uh, uh, But boy, oh boy, uh, it is the best Ellie bow I've ever crafted. Um, it is 100% best in slot mods. It is 100% tier one. Um, and it, for practical sense, for when I'm talking about the divine, it is basically as perfect as it could get. Um, and so I owe, I owe a shout out to the people in chat that were that were willing to, to lend me locks when I needed that. Uh, we're still paying those people back at the moment. Um, however, the bow has been uh, to this point, it has been mirrored, I think, 22 times, 23 times. Um, and as always, uh, you know, obviously I have to have a mirror fee. Uh, 67 mirrors is pretty obscene, <laughs> um, especially because I have to pay back some people that uh, don't let me locks. I've been able to pay back about seven mirrors so far because I finished this Friday night. So I, 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 all of my time so far, actually, this league has been spent either make crafting the bow or uh, repaying people for helping me out finish the bow. But um, to this point, uh, yeah, mirrored 23 times. Um, and I'm going to keep that mirror fee at 150 divines so it's accessible to everyone. Um, it's, it, uh, that's again is a necessity. Uh, TFT has a bow themselves. Um, which is uh, quite similar. And I'll show you guys that in a second. In fact, the first thing I'll show you here is just show you the final finish. Um, as I mentioned, I had unveiled the mod a few times. Uh, normally I get pretty hype about it, pretty jazzed, you know, I'm like, all right, guys, are we going to get this? We're going to get this. This time I was just so annoyed with having to use so many locks. I went out to have a cigarette. And as you can see here, before I even sat down, I just sort of passively pressed unveil. Let's watch above here. <laughs> You'll see me come into frame, I think. Oh, there we are. Okay, I'm walking in for my cigarette. Don't even sit down. And boom. <laughs> so I guess the key is not caring, right? It's like uh, uh, it's like it's like what my dad told me the first time I got my heart broken. He's like, you know, <laughs> treat them mean, keep them keen. I don't think that's the best advice, probably for you know today's era. But back in the early two thousands, it seemed like a great idea. The less you care, other people do. But there you go. And we were very lucky, as you can see. We ended up not only getting 32 out of 32 crit chance, 100% perfect, but I also got 28 out of 28 on the strength and int, uh, which is a roll of 1 in 5 and 1 in 4. Take, that's a 1 in 20 uh, to unveil that would take, it's 20 unveils on crit, right? So crit being a 1 in 4.5, it would take you 90 unveils on average uh, to get that. Um, not to mention it takes 3 Hinakoras locks plus 6, so that's 9 Hinakoras locks. So it would take 810 Hinakoras locks on average to unveil that exact mod there. Uh, and it, uh, as I mentioned, you, you can't do anything other than that to get it. So um, even though it was an arduous journey, a very expensive journey, uh, it was one that ended up working out perfectly. I'm, I'm very happy with um, the effort I put in and uh, I'm very happy with the, uh, the, the, the good faith and, and the, the trust people put in me to, uh, uh, to help me out at the end there when we were at our final mod. And I got a little string of bad luck. And as I mentioned, we've been paying those people off and uh, I've got seven mirrors paid down right now. I still owe a few more. So... Uh, if anyone's interested in mirroring the bow, uh, this is impossible to beat. Uh, as an Ellie bow, it cannot be uh, cannot be beaten. I'll put the link to the mirror um, the mirror thread below. And uh, as I mentioned, it'll be 150 divine fee, uh, which is uh, for obvious reasons. Um, you know, I don't get uh, crowdfunded, and um, I have uh, you know people in my guild who gave me a little bit of money to start off with. Although this league, it was a little bit less than usual. Uh, I think about 85 percent of it I paid for. So, um, but those guys are still entitled to their equity, and uh, so you know I have a fiduciary responsibility to pay them back so um plus i just think you know it's a it's a good model um and i think it's fair and hopefully uh you guys learned something from going through this today and uh, if you're unfamiliar with the process of crafting bows it uh it can be a journey man it's it's pretty fun at the beginning of the league in the same way that uh you know racers they race to get to level 100 or race to get a boss kill uh bows are are really the only place where there's a race um for for mirror crafters and so for me it's something that i tend to do at the beginning of each league um for those of you guys who are patrons thank you so much again uh if you haven't checked that out uh, i'll uh, link the video below as well i set up a new membership system on patreon um just to kind of help me uh you know with the efforts here um last month was the first month i was ever able to afford my rent uh, I'm pursuing streaming i'd lost about fifty thousand dollars in rent uh just kind of going after this and last month was the first time i was ever in the block thanks to that so um i know some of you guys on the patreon are probably wondering when i'm going to be you know giving some guys for the league stuff um it's just because i was so focused on this but now that we've got that done as soon as i pay off the guys that i have to um we can we can move on to that and uh, again i'll leave a link below that in case anyone's interested there's a, a variety of different perks 
private uh, Discord and all that sort of stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, in case anyone's interested in mirroring the bow, I will also leave that thread below. Um, hope you guys enjoyed uh, watching this and it was somewhat informative um, for our last little bit here that I'm sure some of you guys will find fun. Uh, tier fucking two, let's compare side by side. All right. We've got 8% attack speed, 8% attack speed. Belton's bow, tier one. Uh, crit multi, TFT's bow, tier two crit multi. Plus one frenzy, plus one frenzy. Belton's bow, uh, tier one fire. TFT's bow, tier, tier one fire. Belton's bow, tier one cold. TFT's bow, essence cold. <laughs> Hope that's not contagious. Uh, Belton's bow, 28 uh, T1 lightning. TFT's bow, t uh, T1 lightning. Belton's bow and TFT's bow, tier one attack speed, plus two arrow. And then TFT went with the bench, the bench crit. Um, and so our bow has 1,637 EDPS. Theirs has 1,596. Um, ours has 8.58% crit, 8.58, uh, and theirs has 8.12. So by every measure, this is the best bow in the league. Um, it kind of blows TFTs out of the water. Um, just as an FYI, in terms of crafting cost, even though that there's you know maybe a 10% difference between these two bows, um, it would cost 20 mirrors on average to craft this versus that one. Uh, just to get the upgrade of the four multi, uh, the essence to the tier one and the bench. It's actually probably a little bit more than that, maybe 25 or 30. But yeah, total cost, 67 mirrors. Total services so far, 23. Total crafting time uh, took me about uh, 10 days, 125 hours. Uh, long journey, <laughs> long journey for sure. Um, the uh, As I said, the final uh, attack speed, 328 Hinochorus locks. Uh, the final um, Ashling was... Um, it was 36 Hinokoras locks, four unveils, four to five mirrors, and uh, our um, divining on this is very well done. So, uh, yeah, hopefully you guys learned something here. Uh, like, follow, sub, all that other stuff. I'm supposed to pander to you too. Uh, if you appreciate, if you like the video, uh, let me know below. And if you guys have any uh, ideas uh, for our next video, things you want to see, or any questions about this, let me know in the comments. God bless, guys. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Peace.